Throughout the Second World War, Allied anti-tank guns evolved massively. At the outbreak of the war, America and Britain employed 37mm M3 and OQF 2-pounder guns on towed platforms, deemed to be sufficient to tackle the armor threats of the day. By the time the war was over, the Allies were fielding the deadly high-velocity 17-pounder. But there is a less discussed intermediate step, one that was in fact far more widespread and deadly to German armor. That gun was the OQF 6-pounder, and its American counterpart, the 57mm M1. Even before the fall of France, the British Army knew the two-pounder would soon be insufficient as a mainstay anti-tank gun. They turned to older naval guns of a 57mm caliber, which fired six-pound shells. Woolwich Arsenal was tasked with developing the gun, but the final design wasn't ready until 1940, and the gun carriage until 1941. It would take another year until the gun was being deployed. Until then, it was decided to continue the production of two-pounder guns. The first six pounders were mounted on split trail carriages, the same type as the famous Pack 40, which allowed for easier transport and packing. The Mark II was the first mass produced version, but only had a 43 caliber barrel and lacked the iconic muzzle brake. This was changed to a 50 caliber barrel with the Mark IV. Crews were issued with side shields as well, but rarely opted to use them. The six pounder was first used in North Africa in 1942 where it impressed army staff by adequately penetrating and killing all varieties of tanks it encountered. Eventually, Germany deployed the heavier Tiger and Panther tanks, which the guns could not penetrate frontally. However, crews were still able to kill these tanks by attacking them from the sides. The six-pounders of the North Irish Horse Unit can be attributed to disabling Tiger 131, allowing the British to capture the only working Tiger in the world today. To contend with heavier tanks, the British developed advanced APCR and APDS rounds, which could penetrate even the front plate of a Panther tank, allowing these guns to see successful use through the liberation of France. In US service, the 57mm M1 was the standard anti-tank gun in France and Italy, where it outnumbered the earlier 37mm M3. In the Normandy invasion, the 57mm was found to be too heavy for paratrooper use, however the 37 was of acceptable weight. The 57mm was found to be suitable for glider operations, however. As American forces encountered significantly more Panthers and Tigers than the British, they found them somewhat lacking in a frontal engagement, being forced to use them to engage tanks from the side. Somewhat difficult a task in the terrain of France, but acceptable on the defense. American units rarely received the advanced British rounds, and never deployed them. As a result, the 57mm was quickly retired after the war. The 6-pounder was also used as a tank cannon on many different tanks. The British made the greatest use of this, mounting it on nearly everything made before 1944. Often, it was used to upgun older tanks, or when direct anti-armor capability was not directly needed, such as on infantry support tanks. Examples of such would be the Crusader Mark III, whose 2-pounder was insufficient for its cruiser tank role. It was known that the Crusader would still be surpassed by newer design, so a trio of design companies set to work. The A27 Cavalier, A27L Centaur, and A24M Cromwell were the results of this effort. While sharing a similar design, the three vehicles differed in certain areas such as protection and engine. In the end, only the Cromwell was mass-produced. Each was armed with a six-pounder. This would remain the British Army's cruiser tank until the development of the Comet and Centurion. Infantry tanks were also armed with this gun, such as the later Valentine and Churchill tanks. The Canadian Ram also made use of this gun, still being considered a capable anti-tank gun at the time. These tanks, as well as the Cromwell, received an interesting modification as the war continued. American 75mm guns were becoming more popular for anti-infantry roles, and the surplus of munition for them was an enticing prospect for a nation who was still undergoing strict rationing. British engineers looked at the 6-pounder and realized that the gun had enough steel to be bored out to a size of 75mm, and safely fire American-made HE and AP shells. The OQF 75mm was born, and British tanks would be serviced to modify them with these new guns. In American service, the 57mm saw much less use in an anti-tank role. Army staff believed that the 75mm gun was better suited for both anti-tank and anti-infantry roles, and the new 76mm guns would be better for anti-tank still. Nevertheless, a few prototype designs were outfitted with it, as well as dedicated light anti-tank platforms. 
The most and only mass-produced of these was the T-48 GMC, a half-track arm with the 57mm M1 and gun shield, better known as its Lend-Lease designation of Su-57. This was used near exclusively by the Soviet Union, though America kept a number for testing of their own. America also experimented with the 57mm on its export T-18E2 Boarhound, produced for the British Army for reconnaissance. Though it was ultimately never used in such a role, it did serve briefly as a convoy escort. It was never trialed on the late war M38 Wolfhound, despite the 37mm being seemingly unsuitable for such a large armoured car. It was, however, trialed on a pair of prototype tanks. The T7 project was a successor to the Stuart Light tanks, seeking to replace the light reconnaissance of the army. One of these steps saw the tank armed with a 57mm gun, the T7E2. The army ultimately preferred the 75mm, which saw the creation of the M7 medium, but by that point it was too heavy and too similar to a Sherman and was cancelled. The other vehicle was the T49 GMC, a predecessor to the M18 Hellcat. A single pilot vehicle was built, intended for a role as a light tank destroyer. Fully enclosed, lightly armored, and fast, it was a promising vehicle. Unfortunately, the army was unsatisfied with its anti-tank performance, and over a series of weeks, the project was cancelled as well. No further developments of the 6-pounder were undertaken after the war. It was used by some armies into the 50s, but its time as an anti-tank gun had come to an end. The 6-pounder and 57mm served well in their intended roles, allowing Allied armies to take out German armor. With the end of the war, both nations were free to develop stronger anti-tank capabilities, and a light anti-tank gun was no longer needed, being succeeded by heavier towed guns or portable ATGMs. Let me know if you enjoyed this overview of the gun and its history, as well as what tanks it was used on. Stick around by liking and subscribing for more historical and War Thunder related content.